Hey y'all, Justin McKay at Catfish. I'm out here today on Melton Hill Reservoir and I'm getting ready to do some ultralight fishing. I thought I'd bring you all along with me. Now today's one of those days where I don't have a lot of time to dedicate. I've got about two hours that I can fish out here today. So that's really not enough time for me to go and get a catfishing trip in. Usually in my catfishing videos that you see, I like to have at least four hours that I can dedicate just because it typically takes so long to get where I'm going to get set up, etc. That, that knocks out a lot of my fishing time. And so a day like today where I've only got a couple hours, it just wouldn't be worth my time to go out and target catfish. But when I'm ultralight fishing, the cool thing about it is you can you can fish anywhere, right? You don't really have to go far to find fish. So like I said, I'm on Mountain Hill Reservoir today. You can probably actually see Mountain Hill Dam over there from the camera angle. And I just launched right here to this boat ramp. I went across the channel here and I'm just going to work this shoreline. I know Buck Perry would roll over his grave at the thought of somebody just beating the banks and catching fish, but it's going to happen today because like I said, I'm ultralight fishing. I'm not really targeting any species specifically. Uh, just whatever will hit this little jig and that's what I'm going to be using today. I've got a 164 ounce jig head and a one, little one inch Berkeley Gulp Minnow on there. And guys, this is all the only bait I need to catch a ton of fish seven days a week, 365 days a year. I mean, you can do this on any body of water. Really the only times that this isn't really an effective bait to use is in the winter months when it's just super cold and the fish are deep. You, you kind of need to, you can still catch fish on this setup, but you're going to need to add a split shot or a heavier jig head just to get it down to the deeper depths where they're at. And the other time where this isn't really effective is in muddy water when they can't really see it. But a day like today, it's warm months, there's a ton of fish up in the shallows, the water's got good color to it. We're going to catch some fish today and, and probably catch a lot of them here, even though I've only got a, a couple hours to fish. So uh, I'm going to go over here and get set up. Like I said, let me, let me just pedal over here and I'll show you what I'm going to be fishing. All right, guys, so this is what I'm going to be fishing today. And, you know, as you can see here, here's Melton Hill Dam Campground and the launch. I've literally just come right across the channel uh, to this other side. And I could fish over there, but, you know, like I said, there's a campground there. People are out there bank fishing and stuff, so I don't want to get in their way. But this side over here, it's basically just a bluff wall that comes down. It's pretty deep. I don't have my graph on. I never use my graph when I'm doing this type of fishing, but I'm probably sitting in 30, 35 feet of water here where I'm at. But up here along the bank, there's all kinds of down trees uh, all the way down through here that's falling in the water. There's pieces of this bluff wall that's falling down. And uh, there's just lots of places, uh, lots of cover for fish. So we're just going to work this shoreline here just as much as I have time for today. And we'll just try to find us some fish. Let's get to it. First cast, first fish. Bluegill. That didn't take long. Let's let him go, see if we can find some of his bigger cousins. That's the fun thing about ultralight fishing. You just never know what you're going to catch. I mean, we catch a lot of bluegill doing this. Certainly, that's, that makes up the bulk of my catches. But lots of largemouth bass, smallmouth bass, crappie. I've caught drum, I've caught grass carp doing this. I mean, there's literally nothing that won't hit these small jigs. I mean, any big fish eat smaller fish, and that's what this little one-inch gulp minnow, that's what it represents down there. It's just a smaller fish. It's is. Is kind of twitching it back to me there. It's a little better fish here, y'all. Oh yeah, look at that. Jump for us again, buddy. There he goes. Look at that. <laughs> Look at that. He's putting a bend in that ultralight on you. Heck yeah. <laughs> All right. Get a hold of him here. I've got two pound test lines, so can't be lifting these things up here with the line. I'm gonna, gonna get down here and lip them. Didn't bring a net with me today. So what do you eat, guys? I mean, people think a one-inch bait, you ain't going to catch big fish, but that's just not true. There he is, big smallmouth. I got my board with me. Let's throw him on the board here. Okay, he's about 15 and a half, looks like. Not a bad fish at all. 
like I said, man, you throw these little jigs, it's a small minnow-like bait. Big fish eat small fish, and that's what you represent when you throw that one-inch gulp minnow. It's just a small minnow bait. It's a wounded minnow down there. Fish like this, if they're around, they're going to eat it. Let's release him. See you, buddy. There he goes. Fish, bluegill. You flat out wear out the bluegill on these things. I mean, I got my gulp minnow there, but I don't even use live bait when I'm targeting bluegill anymore. I don't have to. No point in fooling with it and the mess of it. And depending on bait stores to be open or pet stores to be open when you want to fish, I just keep these gulp minnows with me all the time. This right here is about the number one tip I can give you with these things, y'all. When you put it on your jig head, and I know I've said this in my other videos, if you've watched my other ultralight videos, you've seen it and heard it to death, but it's important. Put your minnow bait on there straight. It needs to be straight on the jig head. That's going to help it fall naturally through the water. That's going to help you catch a lot of fish. That and the two pound test line. The going from four pound test line down to two pound test line, man, it just increased my catch rate significantly. My friend Randy, he's got a YouTube channel, Trout Magnet Man. He's the one that sold me on the two pound test line. And I can't be more thankful for it because it has made a huge difference in my catch rate. I know a lot of people are afraid of using two pound test line. They think you're just gonna break off all the time. You want this stuff, it's, there's fish. It's actually a pretty strong line. I mean, you see me saw me catch that smallmouth a little while ago. Here's another bass right here. Look at that. <laughs> I don't know if I got on camera or not. He made a good jump. Here he comes again. <laughs> oh, come here, buddy. Come here now. There he is. There's just another smallmouth right there. Like I said, this two pound test line, it'll catch bigger fish than what you think. There was a two or three years ago, and I can't remember, but I got into some huge drum. I was on them for like two weeks straight. And I caught drum that were upwards of 15 pounds on two pound test line. Now it takes a while. You really got to work your drag and, and, and tire the fish out, take your time with it. But it can be done. You can catch some huge fish on two pound test line. <laughs> Let's let him go. Uh, this right here is why I say buy your jigs in bulk, guys. And you're casting up under these overhanging trees. You ain't getting up in there to, to work it free. Now some people want to know where you get these jigs at. You can buy them in the bulk packs on the Trout Magnet website. And that's fine. Those are good jig heads, but they're cheaper if you buy them on eBay or you know go to somebody local that you know that makes jigs. Uh, these are just the these Trout Magnet style jig heads. They're a, a shad dart style, 164th ounce. And I get them with the number 8 hook. And like I said, you can have these things made pretty cheap if you know somebody that makes jigs or eBay or something like that. But the, the better quality, if you want better quality, spend a little more and buy the trout magnet ones. Those are, those are a lot better quality than what you get uh, on eBay. But these eBay ones, they work just as good. All right, y'all, let me show you this. So you see that old log right there that's broke off in the water. You can see where part of that bank is caved in at some point in time. We're going to catch some fish right here. Uh, I promise you we're going to catch some fish. <laughs> Look at that. I was showing the camera. Oh, heck. You're going crazy. I had my bait just sitting in the water while I was showing you all that tree down tree. A little baby bass hit my bait. <laughs> Look at that. Like I said, I just had my bait hanging off in the water while I was showing you this tree over here. That little bass hit it. <laughs> Let me work off this tree now. We got that little, that little devil out of here. Let's see if we can catch some fish off this thing. What I say? First cast toward that tree. Got one on. Oh, he popped it. I was getting the camera over there. It was another smallmouth bass. He popped it while I was fooling with the camera. It's all right. We're gonna cast in there and get us another one.
bluegill right there. Bluegill. Let's let him go. Make some more casts in there before this wind blows us up on it. Bluegill, I can't get my jig down there where I want to on that tree for the small fish hitting it. I'll just cast my bait, let my jig fall. If I don't get hit, I'm going to start just twitching my line. Just like that, just a very light twitch. Just to make that jig dance down there. Cannot get through these small fish. I want to move on from here. See if we can find something a little bigger. The fun thing about ultralight fishing is even fish like that, these small bluegill, there's another one. They're uh, fun to catch on this ultralight. They put up a, a good fight and a good bend in the rod, but I'm just somebody, even when I'm even when I'm ultralight fishing, I'm fishing. Bluegill, bass, whatever. I want to catch the bigger ones if I can. I want to catch a lot of them and I want to catch as big as possible. Usually when you work in a tree or stump, something like that, uh, any kind of lay down, usually if you can get your jig down through the smaller fish and get down there to the deeper, deeper part of it, that's where you'll find your bigger fish just be difficult to get down there sometimes. There's a fish. Right there. Right there's another one y'all. Just a old down tree. You can see it's been there a while. We'll see if we can catch something off of it. Yes. First cast at it. It's a little better bluegill right here now. That's a little better one. There is what we after right there. Now that, that is a nice bluegill. He's a fat thing. I don't think he's very long. I'll throw him on his board. No, nope, he's not even. That right there is not even eight inches long, but buddy, he is tall. <laughs> That's a pretty thing. I like catching them that size right there, buddy. They put up a, get on out of here then. <laughs> they put up a good fight on this ultralight. Let's cast right back on that tree again, see if he's got some friends that are similar size to him. There it is. Oh, uh, just a little one there. Didn't feel him hit, just saw my line swimming. Cast back in there. You find trees like this, these old trees, been here a long time they're going to be stacked with bluegill and most likely some bass are going to be nearby as well. There he is. Good to see my line take off. <laughs> Another little thing. I'm telling you all, you will wear out the bluegill on these little micro jigs. They eat them up. You don't need you don't need crickets, you don't need worms, wax worm, mill worms, whatever. Don't need any of that stuff. It's these little jigs, it's all you need. Fish on. Better one here too. Let's see if we can get the camera over here. See what he is. This right here, y'all. Look at him. That is another good bass. Oh, 
Look at that. I'll set the camera back here and we'll land this thing. Another good smolly. I don't know one inch bait. <laughs> Didn't come flying up out of the water like your friend did. <laughs> Turn that camera around there. Look at that. <laughs> nice spot. Let's stick him on this board while we got it here. That's another one. Right at 14 inches. Good smolly. They are a blast to catch on this ultralight, man. They pull it. <laughs> Let's let it go. There he goes. This dang wind's gonna kick up here now. And is the number one enemy of ultralight fishermen is the wind. It's all right. Well, it's gonna keep working our way along through here. Yeah, I'm not. I'm kind of pointing out to you things that I'm fishing down through here, just the down trees and whatnot, but I'm not spending much time on any of those places. I could, I could sit there and just keep making cast after cast and catching some fish, but with the way the wind's kind of blowing at times here today and being the fact I'm in a kayak, which gets blown around real easy anyway, I'm not doing that. I'm not trying to hold on any one position because it's, it's just not necessary. There's fish all up and down through here, literally. So I'm just working my way along, making a few casts at each object I see until the wind blows me off of it or I'm just not catching any fish or whatever and I just move along to the next one and we just we just work in this short line down through here. Like I said, you can literally do this on any body of water anywhere in the country and catch fish. It's just that good a technique. I think that's part of the reason I like it so much just because it's so simple. You don't need a lot of gear, you don't need a lot of tackle. This ultralight rod, some two pound test line, some jigs, and you know, some, and you, I use these gulp minnows, I like them a lot, but you don't have to use them. I mean, my friend Randy with the YouTube channel Trout Magnet Man, he loves those trout magnets, uh, as his channel name implies, and he catches thousands of fish every year on those things, but any small plastic bait, just a it's tiny half inch, one inch, one and a half inch, whatever, any small plastic like that will catch you some fish. It's more about the it's more about the action of the bait than the bait itself. A lot of people get wrapped up in that. They they focus on the bait itself. They worry about what color the bait is. None of that stuff matters. You want a bait that's just going to fall very naturally and slow through the water. And something that you can just kind of twitch it and give it a lot of action. That's what's going to help you catch fish. Fish. Is another bluegill. I don't know how many of these bluegill I caught. I'm gonna, you know, fish like this. I don't show a lot of them on these ultralight videos. I try to edit as much as I can out. That's a, that's really the real reason why I don't film more ultralight videos. It's just because they're so time consuming to edit. When you go out and you catch 50 to 100 fish on every single trip, editing through that, I, it's just a, it's time consuming. So I don't do a whole lot of these videos, but I figured a day like today where I don't have long to fish anyway, I'm not gonna catch as many fish and it won't take me as long. The most underrated fish swimming in North America, buddy. They are plentiful, hard fighters. They're just, it's all about the tackle, man. You gotta downsize your tackle. And you can have fun all day long on these things. I'm just throwing out, you may can see it on the camera here, this stump that comes off. Pretty good ways off the bank, that's a, that's a bigger tree. It's letting that jig just sink all the way down. That water's deeper right there. There he is too. Don't let it sink a long ways, but we got it down there. And I could add a piece of split shot to this or use a heavier jig head and make it sink a little faster but I ain't I ain't in no hurry today I just let it sink and it'll get down there when it gets down there and it'll catch a fish when it does He's coming right at me. <laughs> where is big brother at mister that's who I'm after 
This one right here. I don't know what these are called. The war mouth or green sunfish or something. They like a bluegill, but they got a bigger mouth on them. Oh, oh, oh. Oh. I don't know what they're called. They're fun to catch though. I catch them out here all the time. Right here's another place I'm going to make a few casts too. You can see this bank comes along and you've got this little outcropping here. This little makes a little point here where these rocks come out. We're going to throw one there and see if we can't catch a few fish. First one. Well, my gosh. <laughs> I said we'd catch some fish, y'all. I didn't say what size it'd be. That is a small, smallmouth bass, ain't it? He's about as big as my minnow. <laughs> There's a one inch minnow and about a three inch smallmouth bass. <laughs> like I said, I said we'd catch some fish. I didn't say how big they'd be. <laughs> oh my goodness. Oh my goodness, we've done it again. <laughs> Done it again, folks. That's a large mouth here. He's still about three inches long, but it's a large mouth this time. Look at that. <laughs> oh, goodness. Get on out of here. I think he went down through my Mirage Drive slot. <laughs> camera over here. There he goes. <laughs> Look at him jump. <laughs> All right y'all, there he is. A little smallmouth bass. These things are fun to catch. <laughs> Let's let him go. There he goes. Alright y'all, that wind was kind of being a pest. It was moving me down the shoreline a little quicker than what I wanted to go. So I moved back down here closer to the dam. So you can kind of see off here beside me. I'm right here by the dam. And that's just kind of giving me a little protection from the wind. It's creating a barrier for me so I can fish a little slower down through here. If I wasn't out here trying to film today, it wouldn't be a problem. I would just go this direction and pedal into the wind and kind of hold my position. But if I do that while I'm filming, I'm going to have this camera mount over here and it's just going to be in my way while I try to cast. So it's all right, though. We'll just move back down here, like I said, let this dam block the wind. And we'll just sit here and catch some fish right here. I don't have much longer I can fish. I've got about 20 minutes or so. So we're going to have to catch them while we can. There he is. Fish on. Oh, Smalley. <laughs> Come flying up, buddy. <laughs> There's another one, guys. Another smallmouth bass. <laughs> you just never know what you're going to get. I'm throwing these little gulp minnows. And yes, that's a urine cup right there. I've mentioned that in another video. Those little gulp minnow jars, as soon as you open them the first time, they leak and they get that gulp juice everywhere. These little pea cups, and you can buy these on Amazon, they just work good, they don't leak. You can flip them upside down, let them roll around the kayak. They don't spill a drop. Look at this. <laughs> I mean, I have caught some tiny, tiny fish today. Oh, goodness, come here. This one right here. My gosh. Look at that. <laughs> Look at that. I mean, that's my bait right there. My bait's one inches. One inch. I can't keep hold of him. He's too small. <laughs> Get on out of here. 
lift my Mirage drive up and go down that hole. But guys, that just goes to show you what having a very sensitive ultralight rod will do for you. I'm a big fan. I like this St. Croix Panfish Series rod. That fish right there, I mean, he's about three inches long, but this rod's sensitive enough I could feel him hit the bait. So those little $10, $15 Walmart ultralight rods, I mean, yeah, they're cheap, they're affordable. You're not going to feel a fish like that hit your bait. So it's just, that just is what it is. You get what you pay for, especially with ultralight rods. You know, this, this St. Croix rod here, it's certainly not as good a quality as the JDM rods, those high-end Japan rods, like my friend Randy, the Trout Magnet Man YouTube channel. He uses those, and man, if a fish breathes on your rod, you're going to feel it with those. But this right here, this is a good, just kind of medium price range rod for you. Yeah, I'm a big fan of it. I like it. I catch thousands of fish every year with this setup. Big and small. <laughs> Fish on. Fish on right there. It's not a bad blue deal. Alright. I don't mind catching on that size right there at all. They are a good fight. <laughs> Go on, buddy. All right, guys, unfortunately, my time is up. I got a dentist appointment to get to. That's the real reason for a short trip today. But I had a lot of fun this morning. In the two hours that I was out here, I wasn't keeping track, but I'd say I got somewhere between 30 and 40 fish total. Most of those were small bluegill, but I did get a couple better sized bluegill, and then I got all those smallmouth bass, which are, man, those are a blast to catch on this ultralight setup. They really put a bend in the rod, and they're a lot of fun. And, you know, if I could encourage any of you all to buy a piece of fishing gear, this will be it. Buy yourself a good ultralight setup and some small micro jigs. That will keep you on fish year round, no matter what body of water you're fishing. And it is just a lot of fun to do. I'd love to stay out here and do it a little longer, but like I said, I got that just dentist appointment and I gotta keep a smile looking good for you. So I'm gonna get out of here. I'll see y'all next time. Thanks for watching.